right, so we're going to dive into this whole AI Anywhere thing. Okay. I've been going over these excerpts you sent over about how Google's looking at it. Right. And uh, honestly, it's kind of got my brain buzzing. Yeah. It's like peeking into the future a little bit. Yeah, it's interesting how they start by highlighting the limitations of the cloud. Yeah. You know, it's very powerful, mm -hmm. but it's not the perfect fit for every situation. Yeah, it really makes you think. Yeah. Like, what about if you're trying to manage a wind farm in the middle of nowhere and the Internet's, you know, spotty at best? Exactly. The cloud's not really going to cut it. Exactly. Or if you have uh, strict regulations about where your data can be physically, you know, yeah. the cloud is not so carefree anymore. Right. So that's where this idea of AI anywhere comes in. Okay. It's really about extending those AI capabilities beyond just the cloud. So it's not just a tech buzzword. No. This is actually happening. It's happening. The document even cites IDC yeah. predicting that global spending on edge computing. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, a core part of this whole AI anywhere shift Yay. is going to reach $232 billion by next year. That's serious cash. Yeah. Okay. Color me intrigued. Yeah. So what is Google doing in this space? So they've developed something called the Google Distributed Cloud or GDC. Okay. For short. GC. Think of it as their way to kind of teleport, okay. if you will, yeah. Google Cloud's AI prowess to places beyond those traditional data centers. So if I'm following you correctly, GDC is basically a toolkit. Mm -hmm. that lets companies take Google's AI magic and sprinkle it onto their own systems, yep. whether that's, you know, in their data centers at the edge or even in spots with, you know, absolutely zero Internet. Exactly. And to fit all those different scenarios, they've got three main deployment options. Okay. Air-gapped connected and software only. Okay, break those down for me. Okay. so What are those options all about? Air-gapped is like the ultimate digital vault completely <laughs> offline. For, you know, situations that demand the highest security, you think like top secret research or military operations. Okay. No chance of any outside interference there. Fort Knox for data. Got it. Exactly. What about connected? Connected lets companies extend Google's cloud infrastructure into their own data centers mm -hmm. while still having like a lifeline to the cloud, yeah. you know, for things like updates and management. Makes sense. And then lastly, software only sounds like the DIY approach. Exactly. It lets companies weave GDC into their existing setup. Okay. Even if it wasn't, you know, built on Google tech from the start. So it's really all about choice. It is. Not forcing anyone into like a one size fits all situation. Our choices are good. Choices are good. But uh, can we get real world for a second? Yeah. What kind of companies are actually using GDC to make this AI anywhere thing happen? So they highlight a couple of really interesting cases. Okay. One is Orange, the telecom giant. Mm. They're using GDC to build smarter networks, personalized customer experiences, mm -hmm. and all while keeping that data local to meet those regulations we talked about. See, that's what gets me excited. It's yeah. not just, you know, tech for tech's sake. Right. It's solving real problems. Exactly. Making yeah. things better for people. Totally agree. Then there's McDonald's. Yeah. They're using GDC to optimize their equipment. Yep. And wait for it. Minimize ice cream machine breakdowns. That's right. That's a use case I can definitely get behind. That's a good one. But how does this magic actually happen? So That's the secret sauce that makes GDC tick. Two key ingredients. Okay. Kubernetes and what they call the AI hypercomputer. Kubernetes, right. The container orchestration platform everyone's been buzzing about. You know, yeah. GDC uses Kubernetes to create this consistent development experience from the cloud all the way to the edge. Okay. Basically giving developers a universal language so they can build and deploy applications anywhere without pulling their hair out. So taking that cloud agility and just letting it loose all over the place. That's pretty slick. But this AI hypercomputer sounds a little intimidating. Don't worry. It's not as complex as it sounds. Okay. It's like a purpose-built brain for AI optimized to crunch massive amounts of data and run those complex AI models. So it's like the muscle behind the brains of GDC. Yeah. Giving it the power to handle all those massive data sets and run those complex AI models even when they're miles away from the cloud. Precisely. And this unlocks some really cool possibilities, especially when it comes to generative AI. Ooh. Now you're speaking my language. Yeah. Generative AI is having a major moment, and everyone's trying to figure out how to use it. Well, GDC allows businesses to run generative AI right on their own premises. Oh. Think of the possibilities. Yeah. A retail store with a generative AI chatbot 
that can handle any customer question, even if the internet's down, right. or manufacturing plant using generative AI to design and optimize production processes all in real time. Okay. It's a game changer. Mind officially blown. Yeah. But uh, before we go full sci-fi, right. let's come back to something you mentioned earlier about openness and flexibility. Yeah. This document really stressed that Google's not trying to lock companies into a specific technology. Exactly. GDC is built on open standards and works with this huge network of partners, tools, and configurations. Mm -hmm. It's about giving businesses the freedom to choose the best solution for their needs without being tied to a single vendor. Yeah, that's crucial. Yeah. No one wants to get stuck with tech that, you know, becomes obsolete or doesn't play well with others. Right. So we've covered a lot here. Yeah. And it's clear this whole AI Anywhere concept is a big deal. It is. But before we uh, get too deep. I sense a what does it all mean question coming on. <laughs> you know me too well. Yeah. We've talked about I the mean... tech. We've talked about the benefits. We've talked about real world examples. Yeah. But what does this shift toward AI anywhere really right. mean? Right. For businesses, for society. Yeah. For all of us. That's the million dollar question. Uh -huh. And one we'll keep exploring as we dive deeper into this fascinating topic. All right. Yeah. 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 It really is a fascinating shift, isn't it? And, yeah. um, you know, while this document focuses on Google's approach, right. it makes you think about the bigger picture. Like, yeah. what happens when AI isn't confined to the cloud anymore? That's what I keep coming back to. Yeah. It's not just about companies running algorithms on their own servers. Right. It's about AI becoming like a part of the fabric of our lives. Think about it. We already have AI in our phones, our cars, our homes. Yeah. But imagine a world where AI is woven into everything from the clothes we wear to the cities we live in. Okay. That's both exciting and a little bit Black Mirror-ish. Yeah. But let's uh, focus on the potential good for a second. Absolutely. Right. Healthcare is a prime example. Mm -hmm. Imagine doctors being able to diagnose diseases earlier and more accurately yeah. using AI-powered tools right at the patient's bedside. Or how about remote areas getting access to specialized medical expertise through AI-assisted telemedicine platforms? That would be incredible. Yeah. It could really level the playing field when it comes to healthcare access and quality no matter where you live. Exactly. And think about education. Yeah. Personalized AI tutors could help students grasp concepts more effectively mm -hmm. by tailoring the learning experience to their individual needs. So it sounds like AI anywhere could open up a lot of doors for people. Yeah. Giving them access to resources and opportunities that were previously out of reach. That's the potential upside for sure. But of course, we need to be realistic. Right. And consider the potential downsides as well. Yeah. Job displacement is a big one that always comes up. Yeah, that's the classic AI fear, right? Yeah. Will robots take all the jobs? It's a valid concern and one we need to be mindful of. Mm -hmm. But it's important to remember that technological advancements have always disrupted the job market throughout history. Right. It's a continuous cycle. New jobs are created. Old jobs evolve. So it's not necessarily about jobs disappearing. Right. But rather about the skills needed for those jobs changing. Precisely. We need to focus on equipping people with the skills to thrive in an AI-powered world. Equip Critical thinking, problem-solving creativity, emotional intelligence. Yeah. These skills will become even more valuable in the future. I'm with you there. We need to be proactive about preparing for that shift. Absolutely. And this AI anywhere trend might actually create new opportunities mm -hmm. in fields like AI development, deployment, and maintenance. Well, okay. We'll need people who can build, manage, and troubleshoot these systems out in the field. So it's not just about fearing the future. Right. It's about understanding how the job landscape will evolve and preparing people for those changes. Exactly. It's about adaptation and evolution. Mm -hmm. And who knows, maybe this AI Anywhere revolution will lead to jobs and industries we haven't even imagined yet. That's a hopeful thought. Yeah. It's like instead of focusing on what we might lose, we should be looking for the opportunities that this technology could create. Precisely. And as we think about those opportunities, it's crucial to ensure that this technology is used responsibly. Right. We need to be mindful of things like data privacy and security right. as AI becomes more integrated into our lives. That's a good point. It's like the more powerful the technology, yeah. the greater the responsibility that comes with it. Absolutely. We need to ensure that AI anywhere is deployed ethically and thoughtfully with appropriate safeguards in place to protect people's privacy and security. OK, so we're thinking about job evolution. We're thinking about ethical considerations. Yeah. But uh, let's not forget about the elephant in the room. Okay. 
this document talks about Google's focus on avoiding vendor lock-in. Mm -hmm. Which is great, but it makes me wonder... You're wondering if a world with AI anywhere could end up becoming a fragmented mess. Yeah. Of competing platforms and ecosystems that can't talk to each other. You read my mind. Yeah. Open choices are great. Right. But what happens if everyone ends up speaking a different AI language? That's a valid concern, and it's something the tech industry needs to address. Okay. Interoperability and standardization will be essential to ensure that AI systems can seamlessly share data and work together, regardless of who developed them. So it's like we need a universal translator for AI. That's a great analogy, and thankfully there are already efforts underway. Okay to develop open standards and protocols for AI interoperability. Hmm. It's an area that's gonna become increasingly important as AI anywhere continues to evolve. This is all fascinating stuff. It is. We've gone from you know the Go nuts and bolts of Google's platform to the future of work to the need for a universal AI language. Uh, it's almost overwhelming how much there is to consider. It's true. AI anywhere touches on so many aspects of our lives. Yeah. And as we move towards this future, it's essential to keep having these conversations, mm -hmm. to keep exploring the possibilities and the potential challenges. Absolutely. We need to be informed, engaged, and proactive in shaping the future of AI. I agree. And you know what? This whole conversation has got me thinking about something else. Let's hear it. What's got your gears turning? Well, we've talked a lot about the impact of AI anywhere on things like healthcare education, mm -hmm. the job market. Mm-hmm. But what about the impact on our personal lives, right. our relationships, our sense of self? Ah, now you're getting to the heart of it. Yeah. That's a deep question and one we'll need to explore further. Yeah, it's a bit mind-boggling, isn't it? It is. Like we can picture AI helping us with work and health and mm -hmm. learning, but yeah. what about like our downtime, you know, our friendships, right? even our own identities? How does AI Anywhere fit into that more personal space? It really is uncharted territory. Imagine a world where AI helps curate your social life. Okay. Suggesting friends based on your personality and interests. Yeah. Or creating personalized entertainment experiences that shift with your mood. That's both incredibly cool and a little unnerving. It is. It makes you wonder about, like, human agency. Right. Are we going to become so reliant on AI to make our choices that we just lose the ability to think for ourselves? It's a valid question. Some experts are already talking about algorithm addiction, yeah. where people become so dependent on AI for validation and decision making that they kind of lose touch with their own intuition and desires. It's like as AI gets more entwined with our lives, the line between human and machine starts to blur. Yeah. Will we start to see ourselves as extensions of the technology? Right. Or will AI become an extension of us? That's a deep philosophical question. Mm. With no easy answers, but I think it's something we need to ponder as we move toward this AI anywhere future. And it's not just about individual identity, right? Right. What about the impact on our relationships with each other? Yeah. If we're constantly interacting with AI companions, are we going to lose some of our ability to connect with other humans on a deeper level? That's a fascinating point. Some argue that AI companions could actually enhance our human relationships. By taking care of mundane tasks and offering emotional support, AI could free up our time and energy to focus on building stronger connections with the people we care about. So it's not necessarily in either situation? No. AI could complement our human relationships instead of replacing them. Exactly. But we have to be mindful of the potential pitfalls. Okay. We need to make sure AI is used to augment human connection, not to isolate us further. It all comes back to intention and design, doesn't it? It does. We need to be thoughtful about how we integrate AI into our personal lives to make sure it enhances our humanity, not diminishes it. Absolutely. And that means having open and honest conversations about our values, our expectations, and the kind of future we want to create with this technology. Right. We need to ask ourselves, what does it mean to be human in an AI anywhere world? Wow. That's a big question to wrestle with. It is. But I think it's the perfect one to leave our listeners pondering. Yeah. We've covered so much ground in this deep dive we have from the you know technical details of Google's solution to the wider societal and personal implications of AI anywhere it's true and as always we've only scratched the surface yeah this is a topic that deserves you know ongoing exploration and discussion as AI becomes more deeply integrated into our lives I think so too well thanks for joining us on this uh, fascinating journey my pleasure until next time keep exploring keep questioning and keep diving deep